welcome back to the plot. It's July the 14th and everything is growing away amazingly. Um, yeah, I'm going to get myself a real good harvest, I think, this week out of the plot. So, you know, I'm going to crack on. All right, guys, I'm uh, taking part in Nick's Sunflower Challenge this year and I've got something to show you. It is, look at one of these little beauties down here. It's my Black Magic Sunflowers. They're not the tallest in the world, but the first flowers have come out and they're absolutely beautiful. Look at that fella there. Doesn't seem to have too much interest out of the bees, I'll be honest with you, so maybe it's not a massive one for the pollinators. But if you have a look, it's putting out lots and lots of these flower heads. So when that really gets going, that's going to be multiple flowers. That's going to be absolutely beautiful, the black magic sunflowers. Look at them. Eventually, after a long time of asking, all of me uh, marrows and courgettes and all the rest of it actually started to uh, pop into life now. So these are the courgettes that I had to re-sow. Apologise for the weeds, it's that time of year. See the, uh, the silvering on the leaves, that's quite normal. I think a lot of people see that and think, oh no, I've got mildew or something like that. With a courgette plant, that's absolutely normal. You've got nothing to worry about there. Those plants look lovely and healthy. Oh, although there is a bramble in there. Bramble! Bramble will be gone. Oh, and there's some else there. A bit of ragwort or something. Anyway, so yeah, these are coming on. I've not got any um, actual fruit just as of yet off it. But if you can see these uh, female flowers here, they're lovely. You can see the female because they've got an immature fruit sitting behind them. All of the male flowers come out on a much smaller stem. Let's have a look on this one. So you might wonder why a lot of your fruit are not doing too well, a lot of your courgettes. If you have a look, some of the earlier ones just produce the flowers which die off to nothing. So here, that's a male flower. You can tell it's male. Nice skinny little stem behind it there. This is a female flower here. Again, immature fruit behind it. So you need the pollen from the male onto the female, and then you've got yourself a lovely uh, courgette. And as you can see, these little flea, little beetles here, not causing any sort of problem. I'll say bright yellow flower like that, it's calling to uh, all and sundry, come on, get my pollen and fertilise me. That's why flowers are so colourful, beautiful. If you ever see these little caterpillars here, I think that's a cinnabar moth, you know the bright red moth? Uh, that's the caterpillars that they grow and they only eat this stuff as well, the ragwort, so you know, they're not a major pest, they're not going to uh, affect your crops in any way. And they actually look kind of quirky, don't they? Look at him there and his little stripy jumper, lovely. Potatoes are ready to harvest now. The way I know that these potatoes are ready to harvest is they're starting to look a bit drab. They're finished flowering now. As you can see, the flower stalks have been up, the flowers have dropped off. Not all of your flowers will drop off, some of them will produce these little things here. That's a potato uh, fruit, if you like. Not edible, quite poisonous in fact, because this plant's part of the uh, nightshade family. Yeah, nightshade. So, you know, you will get potato seeds in there. There you go, there's another one. So, um, a lot of people pull those off, you know, especially if you've got kids on the plot or anything like that, because uh, they might see them and equate them to some sort of fruit that they can eat, but no, they are very, very bad for you. Um, but other than that, yeah, the plants are starting to die back now, as you can see, they're looking a bit drab. Finished flowering. Within a couple of weeks, I imagine that foliage would have died back. So I can start to lift a few of those now. Talking about drab and dying back, the onions are now ready. How do you know when an onion's ready? Because they start to do that, they start to flop over. See, nice stalk bent over there, that means that it's not actively growing anymore. So obviously the moisture's not there in the stem, that flops over and then you know they're ready to pull out. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to pull them all out now. Some of them are still standing up, but the rest of them, they're all ready to come out. So I'm going to pull those now, have a little inspectificate of them. So, like I said before, a lot of this foliage now is dying back. Look. The actual onion plant itself has flopped over, it's not growing anymore, they're not going to get any bigger, so the best thing to do is have them out. Oh, let's have a look at this little one with you then. Look at that. Lovely. What you want to have a do, have a check around your base, because some of these can get um, rot around the bottom of them. Now if you have a look, we've got a little bit of white furry mould there. 
but I don't believe that that's rot. The rest of the bulbs seems nice and hard. When we dry them off, they should be absolutely fine. Onions! <laughs> Now this one, this is one that I pulled up uh, a couple of weeks ago because it looked like it was struggling a bit. Now what that has, that has got rot on the base of it. You see how that white powder is actually impregnated into the onion. So that one won't be too good. You could probably chop it in half and use half of the onion. But for the sake of drying and storing, I'm not going to hang on to that one. So I'll get rid of that. I've got plenty of spares. Woo! Look at some of these little beauties here. Ooh, lovely. Right then guys, so that's all my white onions pulled and I'm absolutely overwhelmed with this beautiful harvest at the minute. Look at this, some of these are really nice big chunky onions. Can't wait, there's plenty of dinners in there, plus enough for family and friends. These ones over here I'm not happy about, so these ones are going to get composted. Just a few of them have gone a bit, I mean that one's split in there and it's gone a bit gooey. So you know, that one's going to go. This one again, it's got a hole in the base. Probably where the rot's got in and it's... Uh, Allowed them to uh, just rot out a bit, but yeah, other than that, overwhelming success. Look at them. Now, I've never been able to grow a decent red onion. It's just something I've been growing for a while now. It's never really had any luck with it for one reason or another. So, let's see if I've managed to grow a decent red onion this year. No, they've all got to go in the bin. Ah, oh, no. <laughs> Only joking. Look at that beauty there. They came from Wilco Sets, I think that was just called Red Onion. It's not a Red Baron or anything like that. That's absolute stonker, look at that. Look at that for a Red Onion, woohoo! Oh, I'm well excited. Way more excited than I should be about an onion. <laughs> oh, come on baby, don't let me down. What are you like? Oh, you're amazing as well, look at you. Oh my goodness. Come on then, let's have a look at you. Well, you're a bit smaller, but you're still perfect. Look at that. Beautiful. Oh, wow. I'm going to throw, pull a few more of these. Absolutely amazing. Look at them. Right, I'll crack on with the rest of these, see how many I get. There's a curious looking fella. He's obviously tried to go to seed at some point, but the flower head's not been able to get out of all of this foliage. So he's actually thrown up his flower stalk and it's all got tangled and wrapped around inside. That also means that that uh, onion might not be too good. So I'll stick him on the maybe pile. Absolutely perfect. Yeah. Right, so now I've harvested these guys, I've got to think about drying them out now. So I need some sort of uh, rack to hang them upside down so that all the goodness can go out of the leaves back into the bulb. And then uh, dry them out and then they'll be ready to store. I've got to try and think of a way of doing that now. I need something with holes in it. Bit of mesh. I'll go and have a look. Right, so I've had a bit of a play anyway and I've come up with uh, my little drying rack idea. I'm going to go into the uh, shed now, so light will probably go a bit weird. Woo, there I am. And uh, here's what I've come up with. Two pallets, bit of mesh on top, couple of canes for support. And the basic idea is, if I can find somewhere to stick you, well, that's not bad, is it? What I'm going to do, onion upside down, keep all the leaves on, don't trim them off. Keep all the roots on as well, don't trim them off. And then really what I'm going to do, is get all of them leaves through an hole. And that's that. That's uh, going to sit there drying away. Not bad, is it? So I should go through now and repeat that across the uh, whole thing. It's going to be fun. It's not going to be fun. 
Right gang, that's it then, they're all laid out there. As you can see, I've got them just poking through this mesh here with the leaves dangling down and the roots in the air. Uh, I'm going to leave them in there now, two to four weeks, something like that, until all of the green foliage has gone brown and crispy and uh, all of the skins have like, you know, gone all crispy and oniony and then um, they'll be ready to uh, trim down or tie up and put into storage. Boom! Don't be tempted to try and plait them or put them into storage while they're still green because you're going to get rot and moss and fungus and maybe not moss but you know what I mean, it's going to get nasty. You know, imagine tying together all of them green leaves and everything like that, it's just going to go horrible and gunky. Best to let them dry out. Right, now we've had these carrots growing in here for a good while now. Um, I had them under cover to protect them from the carrot root flies, but the cover wasn't big enough and they were pushing against it. I took the cover off and now they've all flopped over. I'm just going to pull a couple now to see what we've got and we know where we're at. Not too bad for a start, are they? But, as you can see, not too bad going, not too bad at all. I can start to pull these now, get a few of them out, I'll leave the rest in to grow on. Lovely carrots. Ooh. Now, my tomatoes in general have been a bit of a strange one this year. The leaves have all curled up, I've tried everything. I've tried feeding them, I've tried Epsom salts, I've tried, like, that's about it, actually, that's all I've tried. Um, but they do seem to be doing all right. They seem, other than the, you know, the foliage looking a bit rough, they don't seem too bad. One or two of the plants have started to produce as well now. Beautiful little tomato. Not great when I'm on camera, but... One thing I am going to do in there, it's a bit of a mess, as you can see, a bit of a jungle. So I'm going to trim off some of these lower leaves, make sure that up at the top here they're not outgrowing the cage, and make sure they're all pruned back again, um, just to give them a good chance to uh, breathe and produce as much fruit as they can. So I'm going to nip in there now with my scissors. There we go, there's a massive pile of uh, leaves and uh, twigs and suckers that I've managed to pull out again. I say, as you can see, the plants themselves, whilst they're flowering and fruiting lovely, the leaves on them do not look too happy or healthy, so... Yes, I'll have to uh, try and get to the bottom of that one. This one is how I would expect my leaves to look. And this one is how the leaves actually look. So, it's a new one on me, I've never seen it that bad before, might be fungal. Probably is, but we shall see. Oh. There's one giant plum tomato growing away. See how big he gets. Not doing too bad at the minute. A couple of others on there. If I wanted him to get huge, I'd cut all the others off and just let the plant concentrate on that one. Um, and the other plant doesn't really seem to have set any fruit as of yet, so we shall leave it to see what is happening. This is the uh, yellow tomato here, as you can see, start to put his fruit out. It looks lovely. Yes. This massive flower truss here. This is on the uh, Gardener's Delight. So, we shall see, we shall see. But at the minute, I'm unsure as to what's happening with them. Trimmed all the tops off, as you can see, because they're at the greenhouse roof, so they don't want to get any taller. Concentrate their energy on uh, growing me some lovely tomatoes, not growing through the roof. Yes. See what happens with them. Some of the chilies in here are getting uh, ridiculously big now. You can see some of these here. They're not in the hugest pots actually. I thought trimming them back would help them to bush out a bit and not grow as tall, but they have grown just as tall and still bushed out a bit. So. Yeah, plenty of watering and feeding going off in here. It's not too bad at the minute. I'm watering about probably two, three times a week. As you can see, some of these chilies are really coming into flower now. Good idea at this time. It's just the self-fertile, but they do need a bit of a help. So you can give them a bit of a jiggle. These patio sizzles over here are looking amazing. First time I've grown them. Oh, you blooming great big spider web in my head. Lovely. 
yeah, some of the uh, some of the other chilies coming on quite nicely. Only one of them that isn't, and that's this one down here. Don't know what quite is wrong with that one. Still flowering, but it's looking a bit spindly. Oh, it's a bit of a squash in here actually, because the mini bell tomatoes are uh, going for it. These guys, I've grown four plants again this year, but these guys are absolutely prolific. It's a bush variety. That's about as big as they get, but as you can see, this sort of bush. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yellow flowers absolutely everywhere. There's an absolute sea of flowers in here. Um, and as you can see, where they do go to fruit, they produce absolutely masses of beautiful, sweet, I'm going to say strawberries there, tomatoes. So, yes, absolutely fantastic plants, those ones. What I am going to have to do now is them um, habaneros. They've not been repotted yet, and as you can see, getting a bit squished for that shelf, so that might be my next job. Just having a quick look around to see what else we can see. Oh, look at you. Okay, there's loads and loads of these purple flowers coming out on my aubergines. I can't really, so I don't want to overstretch it. But yeah, as you can see, or maybe you can't see, see that little black beauty in there? It's the start of a, uh, a little aubergine. If you don't believe me, there's another one. It's a bit of a mutant one, that one. But it's, uh, it's a fairly decent size, as you can see. Beautiful sort of dark red, shiny surface on it. And then absolutely loads of flowers on these. I'm very happy with how they've done this year. And I've just noticed... Where is he? There he is. Now he's not my friend, and he will be going. I should check the plants over to see how many more of those little fellows there are. But you can see his evidence, can't you? Little holes in the leaves. Yes. Now I've grown these guys the last couple of years. These are Cape Gooseberries or Fissilis. Um, and they absolutely romp away here in the greenhouse. As you can see, these plants are absolutely going for it. Great guns. Last year I didn't get a heck of a lot of fruit off them, but this year they've been a lot more prolific. Sort of in between every single leaf joint they're throwing out these little lanterns. And then they'll dry out and you get a little, uh, what is it, orangey little grapefruit. Grapefruit? I don't know what I'm talking about. It's uh, a gooseberry type of affair. A little fissilis. So yeah, some of these are looking absolutely wonderful. The telegraph cucumbers are looking absolutely beautiful at the minute. Look at the size of these leaves on them. And uh, they're throwing out dozens and dozens of flowers. And they're starting to produce some uh, little cucumbers as well. Let's have a look. There's one there. I've just noticed a decent sized one. Although it's still early days. There we go. But yeah, these guys are uh, going for it. There's uh, not much tame in them. I've put a bit of a frame up here to try and keep them in line, but they seem to be wanting to make their own way in the world, so I'm more than happy to leave them to it. You see they throw out these little curly tendrils here that wrap around anything, so this lavender bush here has been roped into helping him climb. But also you can see that it'll wrap onto anything there. Obviously it's gone curly, 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 and then wrapped itself around this bit of string here, just to support itself really, so that's absolutely fantastic. Woo, can't spend long in those greenhouses, I tell you, it's ever so warm. Sorry, something's just caught my eye. Ooh, little strawberry. Lovely. I spotted me uh, nasturtiums are uh, making a run for it, look. It's quite funny, nasturtium plant, tiny little thing for a long time, and then all of a sudden it's just like, you know, woken up and now it's like runners going everywhere. Come on, mate, let's run. Let's go for it. So uh, completely edible as well, the flowers, the leaves apparently, very very peppery, but uh, apparently edible, if you're ever feeling brave enough. And then this one as well, yellow flowered one, and so he's shooting away as well. I usually grow them sacrificially, um, because a lot of, lot of bugs, caterpillars, things like that like them. So, you know, they'll go and munch on those before they munch on anything else, that's the idea. Leaks at the back there, not looking too bad after being attacked a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, we shall see. Right, runner beans are running. They have gone all the way to the top of the poles now, as you can see. So the best thing to do once they reach there is you want to be nipping these off. And then what the plant will do is it will put up extra runners further down. 
it will create a bushier plant for you because uh, otherwise they're just going to turn into a right knotted mess and start to hang down so yeah we'll trim those off lovely this is the first of me titan sunflowers has come out now he's looking at me eye to eye about six foot two absolutely beautiful uh, some of the other ones are still uh, just forming up the flower buds but it's amazing how quickly these guys open it wouldn't surprise me if uh, in the next day or two that wasn't a beautiful big flower just like this one his neighbours going for it though he's trying to get a bit taller he must be up there to about seven foot now lovely bit of beetroot that's about a perfect size to be picking these bad boys look at that absolutely amazing well I hope you've enjoyed the visit to the plot today the shadows are drawing long so I'm gonna go home and enjoy some of this beautiful harvest um, if you want to see some more click the subscribe button uh, leave me some comments down below I'll always try and get back to you thank you very much for joining me I shall see you later